Hey everybody, we've been doing videos that cover YouTube for complete beginners for a little while now and today we're actually covering two topics because they're pretty simple and I trust all of you. We've been doing this for a couple weeks now. I think you guys can handle tags and descriptions together. So let's talk about those. And I have here in my notebook a sponsor for this week's video. It turns out it's us. It's our thumbnail services where we just work with channels to make thumbnails for their videos. So if you're a creator on YouTube and you like doing YouTube and you hate doing thumbnails, and there's definitely people like that because I'm certainly like that, then this might be the service for you. We have a number of graphic designers who've worked in the space, who've worked with a ton of different brands, who know a tremendous amount about thumbnails. And if you're worried that thumbnails are something that you're not great at, that's okay. We would love to work with you and figure out how to make your thumbnails great. So definitely check out monsterthumbnails.com if that sounds like you. And with that, on to descriptions and tags. I put these things together because they're both kinds of metadata, but unlike titles, they are not nearly so serious and it's a little bit harder to mess them up and we can talk about them a lot more simply. Now there are pitfalls that we do need to be mindful of, but if we keep those in mind, we're gonna be okay. Especially when you're talking about a beginner level, these are things that are pretty easy to put together. So let's just jump right in with descriptions. On the very offbeat chance you don't know what the description is, the description is the part under the video that says what the video is about. If you're searching, it's underneath the title. Otherwise, it's underneath the video and title in the actual watch page. If you watch a lot of YouTube, you might be thinking, okay, well, I never look at descriptions. Do descriptions really matter? And the answer is, yeah, they kind of matter, but they are not all important. They're not super duper important. Mostly when we're talking about doing descriptions well, we're talking about not messing it up in like a really severe way. And as long as you keep a few things in mind, it's really, really hard to mess it up severely. It's not the most important piece of metadata, but it is a piece of metadata and we should take it seriously. So let's look at a description and kind of go over the parts and kind of best practices. So here is the description down here. And something that you will notice right away is that it says show more, but we have some of the description above this tab. Everything above show more is called above the fold. This is the part that we care most about. Everything above the fold is pretty important to us for a couple of reasons. First off, the description does matter to metadata and what you put in the description, especially at the top, clues YouTube into what your video is about. Some people forego describing the video at all because they don't see how it matters and we definitely don't recommend doing this for a couple of reasons. First, if somebody's looking at your video on the search page, having a description about what the video is about can be helpful. It's not usually helpful, but it can be. Secondly, YouTube does use this to help determine what a video is about in terms of its recommendation algorithm. So if you have your title and it has a certain set of keywords in it and you repeat those keywords in the description, that helps reinforce what your video is about. It makes it much easier to make recommendations. So the first thing that we always put above the fold is a one to two line description that has the keywords from the title in it. If you don't know what your keywords are, that's something that we talk about in the titling and programming for complete beginners. So definitely go check those out. The next thing that we try and put above the fold is a link and preferably a link to YouTube. From this view, it actually looks a little bit cut off. I tend to look at things from a fairly zoomed out view just so I can get a more thing. If I zoom in, you'll see that it pretty quickly comes into view above the fold. It's not an exact science what's above the fold, but generally speaking, the first three lines will be above the fold. So typically we try and put a link in the first three lines. The reason we do this is if somebody is looking at the description, we love to give them a call to action and link and say, hey, if you're down here looking for something, here's something that we might recommend for you. In this case, how to get a thousand subscribers, which if you're looking at this video might be of interest to you. As a general rule, we like to make this link link to something on YouTube. And the reason for this is YouTube is always tracking a viewer's watch time. And if you link to something else, say your Facebook page, they're going to have stopped watching YouTube. YouTube will count that as a session end. Your video, for whatever reason, navigated people away from YouTube. YouTube doesn't love showing people videos that make them stop watching YouTube. If you have something like merch, like you're selling t-shirts, it might be worth it to link off platform because the sales might be better than what you'd get from people keeping watching. But from an algorithmic perspective, we always wanna go with a link to something on YouTube, be that another video or a call to action to subscribe, even another channel. Something on YouTube that we think our audience will appreciate. That should broadly cover everything above the fold because that's all you can fit above the fold. A one to two line description that restates the keywords and then a link and then you're pretty much done. 
It's pretty hard to fit anything else. If you have a one line description, you might be able to get away with two links, but it doesn't really matter. It's not something worth like really fighting for. So now what's left is everything below the fold. Below the fold is a lot more very different content. So there's things like timestamps and links on the platform and links off the platform, a description of what little monster is in general. So how do you decide what goes down here? And the answer is, it doesn't really matter all that much. I don't get to say those words often, and it's very liberating to say that what happens below the fold on the description does not matter a tremendous amount. Because honestly, how many times do you actually click show more and your viewers are the same? Almost no one clicks show more for any reason, unless it's me getting a screenshot for like a consultation client to talk about things in their descriptions and I just need an example of their description. So pretty much anything goes. If you haven't seen the timestamps before, now if you put these in your description, YouTube will actually put it on the scrub bar so people can navigate your videos more plainly. If your video is something that's divided up into segments, it can be worth it to do this. We don't have a tremendous amount of data to say it vastly increases or decreases viewership overall. It's certainly not something that has emerged as immediately hyper necessary and don't break your back dividing up your video into segments if you're not sure what those segments would be, uh, but go ahead and do them if you feel like it. These things link off the platform and technically that still could be an algorithmic problem, but these get clicked on really, really rarely. And if somebody's looking at the show more, honestly, I'm not sure that they were going to stay on YouTube for very much longer anyway. Like if you're in the show more of a description, you are probably looking for an off ramp of some kind. The other thing that we can put in the description is we can actually add a couple of hashtags that get bound to the video as like another data link point. And usually we put that below the fold kind of right at the bottom because it doesn't matter where you put them as long as they're in the description. So, you know, whatever hashtags are appropriate for the video you're creating, you can go ahead and add those. This is not a place that you need to spend a lot of time worrying about. Go ahead and add stuff in that you feel is relevant, but don't overexert yourself. The below the fold description is actually a great place to make use of channel default settings. If you have the below the fold stuff in your channel default setting, it will appear in every video. You don't have to keep messing with it. And then you just take the stuff that will appear above the fold and put it in at the top. And then you can change it up every now and again as it becomes relevant, but again, not something that you need to worry about. So that's descriptions. It's pretty easy because you really only need to worry about the first three lines and then you can pretty much freestyle the rest unless you say something like truly, truly terrible in your description, which if you're doing that, that's kind of a malfunction unrelated to metadata. So that takes care of descriptions. Now let's move on to tags. Tags have a little bit of a mystique because they're sort of hidden information and in that you can't normally see them publicly. If you're using a tool like vidIQ, you can see a video's tags publicly. It's not impossible information to get. It's just not broadcast openly, mostly because it wouldn't be interesting and it would just kind of clutter up the page. A lot of people have a lot of ideas about tags being this mystical SEO cheat code that if you just put the right tags in your video, it's going to show up in all the right places and get all the views that you need. And that's simply not true. And in fact, a lot of people that do stuff like that are kind of sort of sabotaging their videos. Because if you give something tags that are really weird and off base because you're trying to get into a certain kind of search term, you might just end up confusing the algorithm about what your video is actually about. Let's pull up another one of our videos and look at the tags. So these are the tags that we have on six ways to win in 2021. If you look at them, you might see that they look extremely the same to each other. And this is something that we do as a methodology generally. We believe that tags should by and large be restatements of your keywords because that gives you a sense of like having a lot of tags that are all restating the keywords. With tags, our goal is to broadly reinforce what the video is about so that people that are interested in that kind of content won't have a hard time finding it because we will have described it very clearly and made it very clear to YouTube what our video is about. If somebody is looking for how to grow on YouTube in 2021, we want them to be able to find this. It's much more important to us that that audience finds us than if we were to put something like Jake Paul in there trying to get the Jake Paul audience and get a million views. That wouldn't do anything for us because they're not actually interested in the content. So when you're coming up with your video, you're going to have your set of keywords and the first eight to 16 tags, or maybe even a little bit more, should basically be restatements of those keywords in different ways. They can just be in different ordering with different descriptor words or even common misspellings, depending on your kind of content. And you can see that we've done that here. Grow on YouTube 2021. Grow your YouTube audience. How to grow your YouTube channel. 
grow YouTube audience 2021. How to grow YouTube channel versus how to grow your YouTube channel. They're really, really close because at its heart, the video is about growing in 2021. Those are the keywords. Those are the things that we're restating. Then at the end of our tag process, we usually put one to four tags that are a little bit more generic. In this case, Matt Geelin and Matt Geelin Little Monster. These are tags that usually appear in most or all of your videos and just help kind of bind them together as part of the same channel. So that if somebody's interested in that specific channel, that's going to come up. It's not a huge, tremendous thing, and it's not particularly difficult to do, and if you follow that methodology, your tags will generally be fine as a complete beginner. The problems that people run into is they try and game the system, or they think there's some kind of Konami code that they can enter in, and that's just not the case. That doesn't work, it doesn't happen. If you push that out of your mind and just have good fundamental tags that are about your video and restating the key value proposition and keywords of your video, you're gonna wind up with perfectly fine tags. Really, that advice works for both descriptions and tags. If you're a complete beginner on YouTube and you're just starting out and you're looking for advice, you've probably heard the term SEO something like 800 billion times. And it's true that SEO can be good and important, especially if you're a utility channel. But if you're just starting out, the best thing you can do is spend a lot of time thinking on your keywords and thumbnails and titles and letting the descriptions and tags follow from those naturally. If you're coming up with amazing video ideas that have really compelling titles, then using those same keywords in your description and tags is going to make for really compelling metadata. The biggest risk by far for tags and descriptions is overthinking them. And if you don't do that, you're going to be fine. So with that, I hope this video has been very helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching. We have other great videos on audience development that you can check out. If you like this video, be sure to leave a like to let us know that you enjoyed it and want to see more like them. And if you haven't already, subscribe to Little Monster for more videos on audience development every single week. See you next time.